This is limit notation. The way that this type of limit notation is pronounced is that the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. In simple terms, a limit is the value that the y-coordinate of a function approaches as the x-coordinate approaches the value of c. The graph of f of x is shown below. Evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. For this problem, we need to look at what the graph is approaching as it approaches x is equal to 1, which is right here. So from the left side, it looks like the y-coordinate is approaching 2 as the x-coordinate approaches 1, and from the right side, it also looks like the, the y-coordinate is approaching 2 as the x-coordinate approaches 1. That means that the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is equal to 2. Now we need to do the same thing for the limit of, the limit of f of x as x goes to negative 1. So as x goes to negative 1, it looks like our graph is approaching negative 4 on the y-axis. This means that the limit of f of x as x goes to negative 1 is equal to negative 4. In this example, we're asked to evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. So as x approaches 1 on this graph, y also approaches 1. We can see that from the left side, it looks like it's going towards 1, and from the right side, it also looks like it's going towards 1. That means that the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is 1. For the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2, it looks like from the left side, as we approach negative 2, y is approaching 4. And from the right side, as we approach x equals negative 2, y is also approaching 4. But there is a hole in this graph at negative 2, 4. However, a limit can exist at a hole. That's because the limit is not what the actual value of the function is at that particular point. It's asking what is the function approaching. So as x approaches negative 2, y approaches 4. That means that the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 is 4. The limit of f of x as x approaches 4, we have to look at this on the graph, as x is approaching 4 from the left side, y is approaching negative 2. From the right side, y is approaching negative 2. That means that the limit of f of x as x goes to 4 is negative 2. Okay, here's another graph to practice limits. The first question is the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2. So as x is approaching negative 2 from the left side, it looks like y is also approaching negative 2. And from the right side, it also looks like y is approaching negative 2. So the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 is negative 2. The limit of f of x as x approaches 2, for this one we have to look at the graph, and from the left side it looks like as x approaches 2, y is approaching negative 2. And from the right side, as x is approaching 2, y is also approaching negative 2. Now this is a confusing situation because the actual value of the function at 2 is not negative 2. We have a hole there, and the actual value of the function is negative 5. But the limit doesn't ask about the actual value of the function. The limit is asking what is the function looking like it's going to approach at a specific point. And it looks like it's going to approach negative 2. So here, the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is also negative 2. This is a new type of notation. When we have a plus right above our c value for the limit, um, that means to approach from the right side. Positive means what's the limit from the right side. Negative means what's the limit just coming from the left side. So if we're being asked to find the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the right side, we're only going to look at what f of x is approaching as we go to 0 from the right side. So we're going to 0 from the right side, and it looks like f of x is approaching 2. So the limit of f of x and we call this the right side limit, the right side limit of f of x as x goes to 0 is 2. Now we're going to evaluate the left side limit. So now we come from the left side and we're looking at when x approaches 0. So as x is approaching 0 and we're coming from the left side, it looks like f of x is going to approach 2. The right side and the left side limits are useful because there is a rule that states when the left side and the right side limits match, then the limit does exist, and it, it's 2. So if we wanted to rewrite this as one simpler thing, instead of writing out the 2, 
right side and left side limits, what we would write is the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 is equal to 2. And we can say that. We know that it exists. We know that it's 2 because the right side and the left side limits match. To find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3, we have to look at what f of x is approaching as x goes to negative 3. So here's x equals negative 3. We're trying to find what will f of x approach as we approach that. So from the left side, it looks like it's approaching negative 5. And from the right side, it also looks like it's approaching negative 5. That means that the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3 is negative 5. Now here's that new notation again. And remember, the minus means the left side limit. So this is asking for the left side limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1. So x is approaching negative 1, and we are coming in from the left side. It looks like the limit is going to be negative 7, because f of x is approaching negative 7 as x approaches negative 1. That's the left side limit. And keep in mind, we're only taking into account what's happening on the left side. When we take into account what's happening on the right side, this is when we're finding the right side limit. Then we look at what is f of x approaching as x approaches negative 1 from the right side, and that is negative 1. So when the left side and the right side limits do not match, that means that the limit does not exist. So we can write DNE for does not exist. When the right side limits and the left side limits do not match, the limit does not exist. There are three specific situations in which limits do not exist. The first is an example of what we just looked at. So it's when the left side limit does not equal the right side limit. If we're trying to find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 on this graph, from the left side, it's approaching negative 7. But from the right side, it's approaching negative 1. Those do not match, which means that the overall limit does not exist. The second situation in which the limit does not exist is when the function is unbounded which essentially means it is either approaching positive or negative infinity. And since infinity is not a definable number, we don't know exactly what that limit is going to be. And that's why we say that it does not exist. So if we look at the specific example, we're looking at the right side limit of f of x as x approaches negative 4 on this graph. We're just looking from the right side. So x is approaching negative 4, and f of x just keeps going up and up, and we can see that we have an asymptote right here at negative 4. So that means that because this is just going to approach positive infinity, the limit does not exist because infinity is not a definable number. The third situation in which the limit does not exist is if the function is oscillating. And that means it's just going back and forth and back and forth so densely that you can't see what the actual value is. And if you zoom in on this type of graph on a graphing calculator, it's not going to get any more precise. You're just going to keep zooming in, and it's just going to keep looking like this, and it's going to be really dense oscillations, which means that the limit of f of x as x approaches 0, so if we're looking right here, x is approaching 0. We don't know what that limit is in there because it's just oscillating so much, which means that it does not exist. Let's find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 4. We can see that from the left side, as x approaches negative 4, f of x is approaching 1. But from the right side, as x approaches negative 4, f of x is approaching negative 1. Remember, when the left side limits and the right side limits are not the same, that means that the limit at that value does not exist. So our answer for this one is DNE. For the limit of f of x as x approaches 0, from the left side, it looks like f of x is approaching 3. And from the right side, f of x is also approaching 3. Since the left side and right side limits do match in this case, the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 is equal to 3. Remember that the plus sign means finding the right side limit, or what the function is approaching just if you're looking at what's happening on the right side. So the limit of the right side limit of f of x as x approaches 1, we're going to look at what's happening from the right side. As x is approaching 1, y is approaching, or positive 4, right up here. Um, so the right side limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is positive 4. Even though there's not an actual value there, even though 1, 4 is not an actual point on our graph, that's just the whole, 
the limit is just asking what is the function looking like it's going to approach. And it looks like it's going to approach 4 in this case. So that's what we write. For the limit of f of x as x approaches 1, from the left side, as we're approaching x equals 1, it looks like f of x is approaching 4. So that means that the left side limit is also 4. Now, since the left side limit and the right side limit of f of x as x approaches 1 are both equal to 4, that means that the overall limit, limit of f of x as x approaches 1, is also equal to 4. The limit of f of x as x approaches 4, both of these are going up to infinity here. And remember, since, and remember that since infinity is not a definable number, we need to write does not exist here. So even though the left side limit and the right side limit are both approaching infinity, remember that one of our specific cases in which the limit does not exist is when a function is unbounded, which means that it's going to positive or negative infinity.